Welcome to Chris on Heart with Father Anthony Agnes. Today is the second Sunday of Lent. First reading, Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 2, 9 to 13, 15 to 18. Second reading, Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 34. Gospel reading, Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 10. Friends, our first reading begins, God put Abraham to the test. God put Abraham to the test. Obviously, today's readings are not new to us because in the course of the year, uh, we see them come and go. The Gospel of the Transfiguration especially will come to us again in the course of the year. But when these same readings are presented to us, especially in Lent, the Church wants us to look at them with the eyes of Lent. With the eyes of Lent, we are in a period of preparation, indeed on a journey to a sister. And so, one thing that we all know for sure is that during Lent, there are a lot of temptations. A test is a temptation, it's a trial. Friends, this is the challenge of all of us during these 40 days of Lent. We say today is the 12th day, if you are counting, I don't know whether you have some have you have had some temptations already, some trials, some tests. My friend, that is how the life of Jen of Lent works. There are always times of difficulties that we have to make the choice to choose the path of God. And so, friends, Abraham had this decision to make. And God tells him, Take your son and go to a place that I will give you, I will show you. Interestingly, we hear that when God called Abraham, he responded, Here I am. He's ready. It's a sign of readiness to do what God wants him to do. The last 12 days of Lent, can you, with Abraham, say, Lord, here I am? Have you done what God wants you to do? Or we have done what we want to do? Friends, these temptations and trials that sometimes we create ourselves will keep coming to us. But we have to be strong. Asking God for His grace to always say, Here, I am Lord. Choosing God's path. Choosing God's choice. And so we hear that God asked him to go to this mountain, Moria. A mountain in Moria. Without asking questions, Abraham goes on. The second thing of Lent is that Lent is a time to trust in God. Yes, uh, there are so many questions, and so many things happen around you, in your family, at your workplace, and in your own physical life, health issues, you know, marriage issues, uh, job issues, you know them. But Lent is a time to trust in God. Abraham did not ask questions. He was asked and then he started going. Let us trust God during these days of Lent that He will do it. He can do it. And putting this trust in Him is the key to receive His providence. Because it's always the same. God will provide. So I want to remind you, the situation you are going through, the challenges you are facing, God will provide. It means that God will put an end, will bring a solution to that challenge. He will provide. Friends, in the gospel reading, we hear Jesus also taking his disciples for a journey. Don't forget, Abraham took his son Isaac for a journey to a mountain. In the gospel reading, Jesus also takes his three disciples on a journey towards a mountain. The mountain. Mountain in first reading, mountain in second reading. Again, pointing to the direction of Lent. In Lent, we journey towards the spiritual mountain of Easter. Easter is our spiritual mountain that we journey to. And so, uh, just as we hear Abraham and Isaac, Jesus and disciples going up the mountain, that is what we are doing during, during these days of Lent. We are on a journey of 40 days towards the mountain of God. And the mountain, as we know, spiritually stands for the presence of God, friends. The mountain is not in heaven. It is not on earth. It is halfway between heaven and earth, the skies and the ground. And so, it is known as a place spiritually that we encounter God. God comes down halfway and we go up halfway. 
And so in spiritual uh, understanding, the biblical understanding, when mountains are mentioned, the church wants us to know that there's something spiritual. God's presence is going to be experienced. No wonder the disciples led by Peter they had that experience of a lifetime. Lord, he said, it is good to be here. It is good to be here. You see, when God blesses you, when you encounter God, there's only one thing you can say. Lord, it is good to be here. Because in the presence of God, it's always good. There's nothing we can say when we encounter God that say it is good. Every encounter, every experience with God is good. Even if we see it as bad, as negative for ourselves. Because with God, everything works for our good. And so we pray that we will also find this moment of transfiguration, moment of encounter, moment of being in the presence of God. And we can say, God, it is good to be here, to be here in this land of this year. Friends, this is our journey of Lent. We want to have God's presence so that at Easter, we can say, Lord, it is good to be here. It is good to celebrate Easter, spiritually and also in our lives. Friends, we pray that like Peter and the disciples, that the disciples, you see, they are told to come down from the mountain because we have to live our lives in the world, not in the church alone. See, when we go to Mass, every Mass is this encounter that we have had today in the Gas reading. We climb the mountain of God in our churches. You see, we move from our homes to go to church. A journey again, you know, we are pilgrims. The land is a pilgrimage of 40 days. And when we go to Mass, we encounter God like Peter and the friends had. And every holy communion we receive is, we say, Lord, it's good to be here. But then we don't stay in church forever. We must go home. And that is why at the end of every Mass, the priest will tell us, Go! The Mass is ended. Go! That go is not a suggestion. He's not pleading, please go home. No. It is a command. Go! It's a command. Imperative. Go! Eat in Latin. Eat. Go. It's an imperative. Go. Why does the church um, access to go? Without making decision, because friends, Christianity is not lived in the church. We live our Christian lives in the homes, at the offices, where we find ourselves. That is where we show that we are Christians, not only when we are in church. That is why at every Mass, at the end of every Mass, the priest will say, Go! The Mass ended. Go! That is the mission. We pray that whenever we go to Mass and these words keep coming to us, Go! We will indeed go to announce Christ, not just by what we say we are, by lips, but by our actions, especially in Lent, when we do more of actions and less of inactions. We pray to continue Lent with our prayers, our almsgivings, indeed with our fastings, all for the love of Christ, all to become like Christ, so that at Easter we can say, Lord, truly, your son speaking, your daughter speaking, it is good to be here. Let us pray. Father, we pray that whenever we come to Mass, which is our mountain encounter, may we, like Peter and the friends, have this spiritual encounter within us in our hearts. And Lord, as we say to us today, listen to him, listen to your son. We don't listen to him just with our earthly, physical ears. But Lord, with our spiritual ears, with our hearts, so that we will do what God wants us to do, what you want us to do. In this way, Lord, we will have listened to your Son. In his name we pray. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ.